So, if you have a Bible or a Bible app, Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 25 and on. If you don't have it, just listen with me. God is telling uh, the prophet Ezekiel to say this to Israel. Thank God this applies to all of us. He says, Then I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols, and I will cleanse you. A new heart also I will give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. Yeah, I know a lot of us, we like to be hard, but God wants us to be soft. So he says, you're going to take uh, the stony heart out of our flesh, and he will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you shall keep my judgments and do them. Now I want to talk to you about your divine encounter with God. Your divine encounter with God. Now what the prophet gets a message here is that, of course it's prophecy, it didn't happen right back then, it happened years and years afterwards, but God was telling the children of Israel, because Israel kept backsliding, they kept leaving God, they kept going after crazy stuff, harlotries and idolatry, um, they were deciding to have something else be their God other than God himself, and he said, you know what, this ain't working. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to give you a divine encounter. He says, I'm going to cleanse you. He goes, I'm going to change you. And I'm going to, that heart that's inside, you're so hard. Your heart is a heart of stone. Nothing moves you, you know? Especially if you grew up on the wrong side of town. You learn how to be hard real quick. So you think that's how you've got to be throughout life, is hard. He says, I'm going to fix that because your hardness of heart is causing you to lose the blessings of God, the salvation of God. He says, I'm going to take out that hard heart and I'm going to put a soft heart in you. He goes, I'm going to cause you to be able to walk in my ways. He says, I'm going to put my spirit in you because before then, nobody had the spirit of God in them. Sometimes they might feel the spirit of God come upon them, but they didn't have it. But there's a divine encounter that God sets a time, uh, like Brother Bell said, there's an appointed time. God always sets a certain time for every one of us that He's going to give us a divine encounter. And that divine encounter, if we will accept it and not run from it, and we will embrace it and let that encounter engross us, it will change our life. Let me tell you what happened to me. Back when I was uh, 21 years old, I was, it was a few months away from turning 22, and um, all I wanted to do was party. All I wanted to do was, yes, I'm going to work Monday through Friday, because Friday night, I'm going to run home, take a shower, and we're going to go cruise, we're going to go nightclubs, you know, we're just going to go dance and, and drink and whatever have you, and uh, if somebody had weed, we'd smoke weed, and uh, um, we do those things. I know people are doing worse things now. Bad worse things. Sometimes it's they take that drug and it's the last time because it kills them. Because drugs kill quicker now than they've ever had before. But that was my life. It was week in and week out. That's all I lived for. But you know what? On Sunday, I was empty again. And if I had a hangover, I would lie to myself. Oh, I ain't never doing that again. I am never doing that again. Right? You're staring at the toilet bowl, saying, I ain't never doing this again, right? Because you guys are bowing to the porcelain God, you know. I don't want to throw shit out, but you know what's happening. Then the next Friday comes along, and there I am again. <laughs> saying I wouldn't do it again, but there I was again. Why? Because there was nothing in me to be able to help me to live differently. But I started to go some thing, through some things in my life that was hard to handle and was hard to deal with. And, and the, the situation that I grew up in 
and the things that I had seen would just bug me. And that's, you know, people, they man, Charles, are, are you going to watch your liquor this weekend? Why, man? Because when you get too drunk, you just talk about all the bad things that you sit there and tell everybody how wrong they are. And you start telling everybody, I would tell everybody the truth. If somebody was manipulating somebody else, I wouldn't say anything. As soon as I got drunk, I would tell them. They wanted to kill me, right? Uh, anyways, thank God. He saved me. But that life was a mess. And then somebody said, hey, you know, I had a girlfriend, and her dad happened to be a preacher. And he was trying to get his kids to come to church, to come to a Bible. And uh, he says, uh, they, were, they were talking, and I came over to see my girlfriend, and they're on a kitchen table, and his the preacher and his wife, okay, Frank and Lena, talking to their kids, they had a lot of kids. <laughs> and so I come over, oh, am I interrupting anything? No, Charles is okay, I'll sit on the couch, and when you guys are done, okay, they go, yeah, yeah, you're fine, you want to sit over here? No, no, that's okay, you know, I don't want to get involved, you know, I'm talking about, they got a Bible, you know, just like that. Wow, the Bible. You know, they read the Bible, <laughs> you know. So I go sit on the couch, and they're talking back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and one of the sisters, it's not getting it. And I'm looking at her and I'm like, how is she not getting that? You know, and I didn't realize that this was making sense to me. I was starting to have a divine encounter with God. And I, and I, and me, my big mouth, I have to speak up. And I go, well, aren't you meaning this and this? Because Lena said this and Frank said that. So it means this and this, right? And they all went, looked straight at me. Like, like, like Eric, say it. It was all of you. And they go, how did he understand that? And I went, and then I realized what was going on. I was like, oh, she just shut my mouth. Oh, I'm sorry for interrupting. And they said, no, no, that's good, Charles, that's good. And, uh, and they said, why does Charles understand? And little old Mexican lady Nina goes, she goes, it's because God is calling Charles. And that little tiny finger went through me. I saw that little finger and it felt like it went through me. And I was like, ah, ah, ah. I didn't know what to do. But she was right. She was right. I walked into the Holy Ghost realm and I didn't know what was going on. Charles, do you want to come? And I was like, wow, man. Um, that was pretty crazy stuff. Yeah, I think I might go check this out. So they had some revival service, and I went to check it out. And I walk into this church service, and these people are crazy because they're singing and clapping and stuff and jumping and dancing. And I was like, "Whoa, whoa! We don't even get this get this going this quick at the clubs, man." And I was like, "Geez, everybody still has to go to a bar and drink a few drinks so they can get loose, right?" I walked in, and these people were loose already, man. I was like, I told my friend, I was like, "Hey, where are they on?" He starts laughing. <laughs> they are not laughing, dude. I go, okay. they're, they're, they're not drinking or doing anything. No, they got Holy Ghost. And I was like, what's the Holy Ghost? <laughs> and he started to say, it's the Spirit of God. When you got the Spirit of God, and here's this backslider who was stoned out of his door because he, 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 he left God, but even though he'd go to church, this guy had to smoke a joint at least. Once every maybe six hours, no joke. Um, last I heard, he's living for God again, though, without the weed. Praise God. But he starts laughing at me, and he's high, but he's telling me they got the Holy Ghost, and that's why they're doing all this. And uh, I just feel, and I had demons in me, I didn't know, but I had demons. But this is what the demons did when I was sitting in the very back, and I was watching people run the aisles, and they were jumping, and, and I heard them speaking in tongues, and I went like this. And I grabbed that wooden pew, and I was squeezing it so hard, my friend was, hey, bro, your knuckles are turning white. And I thought, well, I am white. <laughs> and I looked down, I was like, oh. I was like, what is going on here? But I didn't go pray. Because I thought, oh, these people are crazy. So after they were all done, and then the preacher gets up and he's preaching, and it sounds like he's all over my life, like he's been watching me for the last 10 years. And I'm like, what is going on? I'm having a divine encounter. It's an appointed time and it's a setup after a setup after a 
for a setup. What am I saying? I'm trying to tell you that this is part of your setup. This is part of your setup. So I decided I want to go to the next one. I'll put them in. Out. We came outside of the church. It was in their set. What do you think, Charles? And I was like, y'all's crazy. And they started laughing. And I was like, wow, what is this that I felt? Whoa, it was a, I'm, I'm blown away, you know? I, I grew up a Catholic, and we would fall asleep in one hour mass. And you guys were at it for three hours, and it was like entertaining and interesting. Right? They said, well, you want to come tomorrow? I go, yeah. They go, it's, 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 I don't think he's going to want to go into Bakersfield. Where's Bakersfield? Three hours south. I'll drive. Did we get a drive? Yeah, I'll take your brother. They laugh, you're taking him? You're taking Stoner with <laughs> you? Yeah. And guess what? We drove up there, and his uncle and him in the back seat, and they're getting high, and they're drinking. Charles, you know, no, I never drink and drive. I don't drink and drive. Oh, uh, you want to smoke? No, I'm not doing it. And then you know what? The guy in the back says, Charles is getting converted. And his uncle goes, yeah, he is. And I go, what's converted? <laughs> what? What's converted? And they go, yeah, you're getting converted. I go, what are you talking about? I'm driving and they're saying, you're starting to change your rhythm. Jesus is getting a hold of you. And here's two stoners preaching to me. Telling me, true story folks, telling me this guy doesn't want to drink already, this guy doesn't want to get high, he's willing to drive three hours, you're getting converted. I was having a divine encounter. Exactly what I read to you, it was happening. So I went to that service, and now it's this church that seats about a thousand people, and I was looking at it, and I was like, whoa, this is big. Let's go and I sit in the back again. Remember, we got demons, so we don't like to go sit up in the front. We like to sit in the back because we're demons. And you're probably wondering how I, 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 I'll let you know in a minute. Okay? But the story gets better and better. So, all of a sudden, they start singing again. And everybody, right on cue, this time, it's like 20 or 30 of them, they just start running the aisles. And I'm in the back, so I gotta get up against the wall and go, vroom, vroom, vroom. and as I, everyone that goes past me gives me chills. I'm like, Whoa, what's going on here, right? And there are people jumping and dancing, you know. And this one guy's going, Hallelujah! And he shakes his body. Every time he shakes his body, I feel like something in me just kind of. But I, but I don't want to run out. I'm not running out. This is way too good. This is way too interesting. They got something, and I think I want it. And people are just, I mean, it's just amazing. And everything is just going crazy. And after about 45 minutes of that, I look, and right here in the foyer, there's some firemen. Because right next to the church is a fire department. And, they're, and the ushers are talking to the firemen. I told them, hey, I told the stoner next to me, hey, man, the fire department's right here. They go, what? The fire department? Yeah. Well, okay. And so all of a sudden, one of us is excited, he runs all the way down, runs all the way up, and he tells one of the preachers, and the preacher gets excited, and runs over, tells the guy behind the mic, and they go, just to let you know, there's so much power and Holy Ghost here, that the fire department next door saw fire shooting out on the roof of the church, and they came right now because they wanted to make sure we weren't going to catch fire. And, and I was like, because they had this huge blue lamb beans, I mean huge beans are like about this way, and they went this way, and this way. And so me, I'm like looking for fire. No fire. I don't see no fire. And Stone next to me goes, no, dummy. The Holy Ghost fire. It's because the Holy Ghost is here. And they saw a spiritual Holy Ghost, a spiritual fire. And I was like, what? And right when he said that, because he said that, the whole place blew up in smoke. And everybody was doing it. And everybody was doing it. And then I was like, man, I need a pew to grab a hold of. He's too far away, and there's now there's like 50 people running out, and I'm all like, oh, oh my God, what's going on here? Holy, holy Jesus! I wasn't saying that. I was, I was saying something else, <laughs> right? I'm telling you the truth. I'm not making this stuff up. This is legit. And I'm like, oh, oh my gosh, people are not sitting. 
there. And then the preacher, you know, and this went on for three hours. And it felt like five minutes. So then we were done. And I was like, are there, are there any more? <laughs> are there any more? And they said, well, there's another one in Turkey. And so I went to that one. And all of a sudden, guess who I saw there? Two of my co-workers. I knew these dudes were really nice. And they were really nice, good uh, people. They took care of themselves. They were really cordial, polite, always nice, you know. And all of a sudden, they're like, hey, Charles, how you doing? I was like, hey, how are you? Yeah. Oh, wow, you know. And then, oh, here's another one on this side. You know, hey, Charles, how you doing? You know? And I was like, oh, you both go to this church? Yeah. And I was thinking, oh, that's why you guys are so nice. <laughs> well, after the preacher was done, and then this preacher was all over my life. This preacher was all over my life. And I was just like, how are these guys doing this? These, these, these guys, this guy is from, from the South. He's from like, I don't know where it's the old like in Mississippi or something. And but he, the other guy was like, how did they, you know, it's like they knew. They knew me. I was having a divine encounter. I was having my divine encounter. God was reaching to me because he was going to change my life. After we're done, they come up, he said, Do you want who wants prayer? Who wants the Holy Ghost? Who wants to change your life? Right? I don't know any of this. I have no clue what they're talking about. Because I grew up as a Catholic and an inactive one at that. They came up to here go, here go, one on his side and one on his side. Well, I was getting away. <laughs> but I didn't want to get away. I was like, oh, I don't want to, God, I want to. Oh, he said, go up for prayer. God, I want to go. I want to go, but I can't, I can't. I want to go, but I can't. And something was holding me back. I had demons. But they came up right next to me. Thank God. They came up. Charles, you want to go? Yeah. You need help? Yeah. And so they said, let's go. And they took me. And I was like, oh. you know, I'm going right up there. As soon as I get up there, they start telling me, this is what you do. Raise your hands. Raise your hands and surrendering to God. Okay. Raising my hands and surrendering to God. Yes. It's, it's like you're surrendering to him. And, and, and then call out to him. Tell him, forgive me for my sins. And I, I was doing what they told me. But they, they were saying it in my ear. And I was saying, Jesus, forgive me for my sins. And tell him you'll never do it again. Jesus. I don't, I don't want to do it again, Jesus. I, I, I'm not, I'm not going to do it. They said, tell him, tell him you want him to save you. And I said, Jesus, I want you to save me. And everything they're telling me, I'm being obedient. Why? Because I really wanted it. That's why. That's why I've told people, you want the Holy Ghost, you want the Holy Ghost. Are you willing to do everything I tell you to do? Uh, I don't know. Then you don't really want the Holy Ghost because when they were telling me, I did everything. I wanted it. And sometimes you have to be straight with people because you can't get around the bush. Because God ain't going to force himself on nobody. you got to go get it. He's going to lead you and draw you, but he's not going to force you. So they were telling me, they said, uh, now say hallelujah Jesus and you'll get the Holy Ghost. And you're going to speak in tongues. And I don't know what the Holy Ghost is. And I don't know what speaking in tongues is. I don't read the Bible. I don't have no clue. I don't know what tongues is. They're saying, say hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. And I'm like, hallelujah. I don't know what hallelujah means. And one guy says over here, hallelujah means I give my entire self to you. It's the highest praise word. Thank God for that guy so I can understand. So whenever, after that, whenever I start to pray through the Holy Ghost, I like to give lots of instructions to speed up the process because I was up there for a while. And I'm all, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. And I start crying. Hallelujah, Jesus. So that's it. And all of a sudden, my hands start shaking. And I feel something coming upon my body. And in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, my God, what's going on? Oh, is this it? And, I'm, and I just don't stop. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. And then I felt like somebody poured. And I legit almost opened my eyes. Because I thought, one of these dudes just poured oil all over me. And he poured a whole bottle. Because I felt warm oil, boom, hit my head. And right when it got to my forehead, this is what happened to my mouth. Look, I'm like, how do we just walk? I felt things rip out of my body, come out of my mouth. I didn't know what they were then, 
But a couple years later, the Lord has said, remember when you read before I filled you with the Holy Ghost and you felt things come out of your mouth? I said, yeah, what was that? Lord, he goes, those were demons. And as soon as it went, rah, it, the, I felt like the oil hit my mouth and I started speaking in tongues. And no, I didn't sound like I was speaking in Hebrew. It sounded like I was saying the letter D 100 miles an hour and I did it for probably 15 or 20 minutes. I was D, 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 D. And, and, and all of a sudden I was just like, whoa, this thing is like, I, I'm, I'm feeling it all over my arms, all over my body. I'm feeling it go down my legs. I'm feeling like, oh my God, they poured this oil all over me. But wow, it's amazing. And I'm speaking in tongues and I'm shaking. And I didn't, they go, don't stop, don't stop. And uh, if I could have spoke English, I would have said, don't worry, I'm not. I'm not. Because whatever this is, is exactly what I've been looking for for almost 22 years. This is what I needed. Mm. And I was speaking in tongues, and after that, after I was done, they go, so what do you think? I was like, they go, you can't even speak, huh? And I'm looking at them like, are you crazy? I'm still like, like a light bulb that's been, I was like, wow. And they said, okay, come here. We gotta show you something. We gotta show you something. We gotta explain to you what happened to you. And so they take me to the book of Acts and they said, and we start reading. Chapter two. And when the day of Pentecost has fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing high wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And, uh, and they said, Charles, in the Greek meaning, that word tongues means a heavenly language that you don't just learn. When you receive the Holy Ghost, it happens to you. And I was like, yeah, because it just happened to me. And what am I saying to you today? You're here because you have a divine encounter with God which is going to set you up for another encounter and another encounter. And your whole life is going to be constantly having a fresh encounter with God. I've been in this for 30 something years and I can't tell you how many encounters with God I've had. I've had so many encounters with God. I've had so many dreams and visions. I've seen signs, wonders, and miracles. I've seen AIDS heal. I've seen cancer heal. I saw a woman's leg that was shorter than the other one grow to the same level as the other leg. I've seen people who had brain cancer heal. I've seen so many encounters with God, and it all started with one. And he said, so do you realize you got the Holy Ghost? And I said, well, I read it just now, so I believe it. Yeah, that happened to me. And they said, okay then, you got to finish it off. Let's go to verses 37. And so, yeah, okay, you know, I don't know what I'm reading. I have no clue what this is. I never heard of the book of Acts. I didn't know none of this. And they said, now when they heard this, they said Peter was preaching on the day of Pentecost. They were pricked in their heart. And they said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Hey, what do we do? We're a mess. What do we do? And then he says, and Peter said unto them, repent. And they said, Charles, you already did that. Because if you didn't repent and have faith toward God, you won't get the Holy Ghost. But you got the Holy Ghost, so you're repentant. And I was like, I know I am. Uh, I was saying, forgive me for my sins. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. He said, if you already received the Holy Ghost, you just need to be baptized in Jesus' name. And I said, I'm Catholic. I was born in the 60s. The priest still dumped babies under the water. Thank God they didn't drown me. And I said, that, does that baptism work? And he said, no. Nope. Because you got to be baptized as an adult. And he said, that back then, adults were out of puberty. You know, back in the days, you can get married at 12 and 13. And he said, because babies, they don't know that they need to repent. They don't know that they need to have faith toward God. And they said, but are you repentant now? And I said, yeah. And they said, plus, they didn't say the name of Jesus when, and I go, no, no. They said, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. But they said it in Latin. 
And they go, what does it matter? And they go, well, you're right. They didn't say the name of Jesus. So baptized me. And they went and told the pastor, hey, let's get baptized. She's got the Holy Ghost. And so they looked into the, they pulled the curtain for the baptistry, and they said, bring it back tomorrow, there's no water. I was like, what? Are you kidding me? So yes, I had to wait one day. Okay? Now, that's why I, now, I don't care if there's no baptistry. If you want to get baptized and you're repentant, we'll find water somewhere. So I'll take you to a canal. I'll take you to a river. Whatever. We're not going to wait one day. But you know what? I waited that one day, and guess what? I counted the hours. I couldn't wait. You know? And as soon as I got there, first thing I told the, my coworkers, okay, I'm ready to get baptized, you know? And are you ready? And I go, make sure you have water in there. I told them, make sure you have water in there. And they go, there's water in there, Charles. I said, because I'm not coming back another night. I'm going to go find someone else to baptize. And they baptized me in Jesus' name. Guess what? When I came, went down in the water, he said the name of Jesus Christ. When I was coming out of the waters, I started speaking in tongues again. And not only that, I felt like I lost 50 pounds. And I felt super clean. And I felt like I was glowing. And as I'm speaking in tongues, God gives me a vision. I didn't even know it was a vision. So someone told me later on. God gave me a vision. And it was me at this rock concert in the bay. It was called Day on the Green, where they had uh, Motley Crue and Poison and all these crazy rock bands. And when we were leaving that thing, we were walking out of the Coliseum, we could see a haze of marijuana smoke over there. People were fighting and passing out. And the Lord reminded me, and he told me, I have delivered you from the power of darkness. And from that point on, my life has been a life of a divine encounters with God. And so what am I telling you today? Today is one of your divine encounters. What are you going to do with it? That's right, all of us. What are you going to do with this divine encounter? We have preached to you the word. We've showed you the apostolic truth. Now, I know you're about to eat food, but I'm just going to ask if everybody can stand. Just stand right where you are. Just put your seat down. And if you want to pray, right where you're at, you don't have to come up to the front. If you want to, that's fine. But I'm gonna I'm gonna make it easy on you because God doesn't need He's He's everywhere. He's where you're at. If you already have the Holy Ghost speaking the tongue, He's already inside of you. So you just start praying right where you're at. Just praying, sister. Can you play something? No. Where's the keyboards? No keyboards. Okay, don't worry about it. We'll do it. We'll do it just for you and dry. You got the Holy Just pray. Just, if you bow your hands, lift your hands, whatever, and pray, and just begin to pray out to God, and just ask God, Jesus, I want an encounter. Jesus, I want you to change me. Jesus, the word was just now preached. Maybe you, you know the Bible, but you haven't heard this, these scriptures. Maybe you didn't know about this encounter. Say, Jesus, I want an encounter. I want you to change me in the name of Jesus. Be loosed and liberated right now from everything that holds you back, from anything, any, any experience that has hurt you, any experience that has caused you to struggle. In the name of Jesus, be delivered. All demonic influence be broken from your life. Be set free in the name of Jesus and receive your change right now. God, pour your spirit upon everybody that's here, Jesus. And make a change. Right now, Lord, change everybody that's in this place. Receive your encounter with God that you will never be the same starting today. Starting today. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And I just want you to say, Lord, change me. Lord, meet me, Jesus. Lord, give me an encounter, God. Show yourself real unto me, Jesus. Forgive me for my sins, Lord. I believe you. I know you shed your blood for me. I need your spirit, Jesus. Give me the same encounter that you gave Brother Charles. 
the same encounter that you gave the people in the book of Acts, uh, the apostles in the early church. God, in Jesus, help me, Lord. Help my mind, help my heart. Hallelujah, Jesus. 